All right, here we go, folks. Friday, March 27th, day five of the coronavirus broadcast. Oh, what a week, what a day. We've got a lot to talk about. And, of course, I am doing this for posterity. We will look back at this at some point in the future and remind ourselves of this terrible ordeal we are going through. I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody is well. Let me take this off. All right. So big news. First, let me talk about the market today. We closed week uh, down 900 on the Dow, down about 3.5% on the S&P. Look, the sell-off came late in the day. The market was recovering. I actually sent out an email to my subscribers saying, uh, buy the dip today. We were down, and I had the level of um, 25.24 on the S&P. I think we closed somewhere around there, maybe slightly below there. But we rallied all the way till about just about 20 minutes before the close, and then some news broke. Now get this, because this is this is pure zombie behavior. News came out that the Fed was going to taper its bond purchases. Taper meaning reduce the magnitude of those purchases from the current $75 billion a day to $60 billion a day. Now, of course, <laughs> you know, the zombies reacted to that. Oh, my God, you're taking away the stimulus. You're taking away the punch bowl. No, actually, it's... I would say somewhat of a positive thing for at least two reasons. Number one, the Fed has been so enormous in its bond purchases that there is a shortage of bonds out there and dealers don't have bonds to repo. So the Fed, here we are, and Fed's been and other central banks have been buying up trillions and trillions of dollars in financial assets, literally draining the financial system of these assets, which also serve as the most important collateral in the financial system. I've spoken about this before. It's literally the, the grease that keeps the whole thing working. And the Fed realized, hey, nobody, we're, we're, we're not leaving anybody with any of these bonds. So they had to taper. But of course, the zombie, oh my God, they're tapering. It must be, you know, uh, pulling away monetary support. No, actually, you know, the more of these instruments that the central banks can leave in the economy, the better it is for the economy. When this Fed strips out trillions and trillions of financial assets and keeps it for itself, the Fed is the one who earns the income on those assets. It's like the government paying you know, taking money from one pocket and putting it in another, but that money is not going into the economy. So leave some of those financial assets in there. It's actually a bullish thing. When the market sold off late in the day, I, I didn't know what was going on. They said Trump was going to have a press conference. I thought maybe somebody knew something, maybe something bad was going to happen. Uh, but then when I found out the reason behind it, it's all good. So that's, that's that. Uh, let me say this, the, the banking data, I just looked at the banking data for the week ending uh, March 18th, which is the latest data. I'm just going to glance over here. I have the numbers. The numbers are mind-boggling. They are mind-blowing. Like, really, some of these things have set records, okay? Bank credit in the week ending March 18th increased $267 billion. That was the largest one week increase in 10 years. And the growth rate in bank credit is now 8.4% year over year. That is the fastest growth pace in 10 years. Loans and leases at commercial banks up 254 billion in one week. It was the biggest increase in 10 years and the growth rate is 7.2% year over year. That is the fastest in three and a half years. Commercial and industrial loans, right? That's big companies. They go, these are loans for those big companies. Up $177 billion in one week. That was the biggest increase ever. Ever. Like you could go back to the 2008-2009 financial crisis. I think the biggest one-week increase there was 
about 20 or 30 billion. It was up 177 billion in one week. The growth rate surged to 8.6% year over year. That is the fastest in, in one year. And deposits, bank deposits, up 303 billion in one week. That was the biggest increase in bank deposits ever. Fastest growth, I mean the growth was up to 9.7% year over year. That is the fastest in seven years. So you see what's going on here. Mostly companies, now there were other uh, you know, uh, elements in those loans and leases like real estate loans are up, um, consumer loans, eh, not that much, all right? So you see what was going on. Uh, corporations have tapped into credit lines, have, have went, they've gone to the banks, they, they uh, took out loans, they are flush with cash right now. Corporations are, they just like loaded up because they saw what was coming. They're sitting on mountains of cash. Now, they're gonna get more money now from this stimulus bill, from this rescue bill that just been signed, actually was signed today by, by Trump. So right now, the system, the economy is flush with cash, not, not people, unfortunately. Now, uh, hopefully soon they're gonna start to get their unemployment checks and, you know, the other thing, those $1,200 payments, I mean, that's going to take time. So it's bad for people. And once again, we see, we see what's going on here. I mean, and once again, and even in this uh, bailout bill, it heavily, heavily favors business over individuals, which I've always said that's the wrong way to go. You could load businesses up with cash and they could continue uh, functioning, but they're burning through that cash without generating any revenue because their customers have no money. But anyway, the situation right now is corporations loaded up on credit. Now, you have to think, in the, in the back end of all this, when we get all through this, all that debt is going to be there. So yeah, in the very short term, like right now, they're flush with money from credit but that's a debt. That's not a net addition to your wealth. You get an asset, which is a deposit in your bank account, these corporations get, but at the same time you get a liability, which is the loan itself, which has to be paid off. So that is a situation, and, and I, I think that's a reason why we could see the market rally further. Now, I'm still saying longer term, later in the year, uh, when this stimulus runs out and when that debt becomes a factor and when people, you know, burn through uh, the $1,200 or whatever or, or, you know, don't have enough to subsist on unemployment benefits, there's going to be a problem. They're going to have to do another thing. The dollar falling. Listen, you know what is interesting? And I, and I made that uh, video the other day about, hey, you know what? I saw the numbers. There was a dollar shortage, but guess what? Last week, the Fed stopped everybody out. You talking about getting stopped out? <laughs> the Fed stopped everybody out who was short. Um, with that $206 billion in those uh, Forex swaps. And those swap lines are open now. That's not, that was not like a one-week thing. So like, there is no dollar shortage anymore because the Fed is there as a backstop with those liquidity uh, swaps and you know when other systems foreign systems are short dollars they can go to the Fed now remember the Fed also designated a, a, a bunch more central banks uh, as authorized now to come to those swap lines like before originally it was only a cut it was the ECB it was uh, the Bank of Japan uh, it might have been the, it was the Bank of England uh, it might have been the uh, Bank of Canada. I don't know if um, uh, Royal Bank of Australia, RBA was in there. But anyway, the, the more central banks were authorized to tap into those swap lines. So that dollar, that's why you saw once, once the Fed engaged in those swaps, what happened? Dollar peaked out, starting to come down. Dollar index was at 98 something today. We've had almost a five big point um, reversal 
from the peak where it hit at 103. So that's what's going on, and a lot more. Um, you know, I'm bullish here near term in the market. Uh, that the banking data, man. I mean, you should go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. I'll send you the charts. I mean, the charts are like, they're through the roof, man. They're unbelievable. So, all right, let's end off. Crazy times. Everybody stay well. Stay well. Remember, we're in this together. We will never give up. Like Churchill said, we will fight on the beaches. We will fight on the seas. We will fight in the hills. We will fight in the streets. We will never, ever, ever surrender. Stay safe, everybody. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.